welcome back to my Bloodborne Diaries. Man Alive, it's part flipping five. It's day nine in the big Bloodborne house, and today our Bloodborne man has got himself a brand new sword. It's a big sword with a little sword inside of it. Yes, all right, look, I'll stop doing that. I've got a big sword, right, but it's got a little sword inside of it. It cost me 20,000 blood pounds, and I'm having a lovely time with it. So let's get out there. It's a beautiful day. It's a dark day. There are single ladies that need to be killed, and I'm going to do it. And excitingly, I finally found a character who can really appreciate what it's like for me to play Bloodborne when hungover. So I might come back to find this little lady next time I'm in need of some sympathy. But now is not the time for hangovers, now is the time for madness. And let's really ramp up the madness. I've got some madness in my pocket. How many madnesses have I got? Uh, 12 madnesses. I'm going to eat all 12 of my madnesses at once. Oh, ho, ho. it's all gone a bit fruity tooty. 31 insight. What is that going to do? I don't know. Something bad, probably. Way! And my word, hasn't this game learnt a lot from Resident Evil 4? Why not have it outside? Why not have a bit with men with knives? Why not have a bit with ladies with knives? It's textbook. This is textbook Resident Evil 4 stuff. And I like it. There was even a scary bit of barn. Ooh, a scary barn. Anyway, all single ladies give me a lot, lots of grief and... That's fine, I completely appreciate that. That's just what they're like. And I mean, I like this area, look, you know, all the single ladies. And then also you've got all these, like, bodies wrapped up in, in kind of wicker. Like, you get fancy flowers wrapped up from if you buy them from a fancy flower shop. Uh, presumably these are all the bodies of the men that have not been deemed to be suitable as suitors for all the single ladies. And uh, yeah, I've got a lot of time for that. Check it out, this room's just full of them. Just full of um, men who didn't make the grade, presumably. You know, it's fine. It's just sisters doing it for themselves. I've got a lot of time for that. What I've got increasingly less time for, however, is the modder dogs. Modder dogs? What are modder dogs? Well, they're kind of modified dogs, right? Look, I mean, I didn't look at them carefully, but basically they're dogs who have had loads of knives sort of strapped to them or attached to them or whatever, right? I mean, this is clearly the work of a monster. Like, this is somebody on the level of, you know, Tim Westwood. I'll pimp my rye. This is pimp my pound. And it's, I mean, obviously it is worse than Pimp My Ride in terms of like animal rights, etc. But, you know, Pimp My Ride was, was pretty crass. But, I mean, this is really bad. This is like very bad. But anyway, lots of them at once. Problem. They, they jump around all over the place. And, I mean, effectively they are dogs covered in knives. That's not a good thing. Unless that dog covered in knives thing is on your side. And he's called, uh, pfft, Turbo Lassie. No, oh, that doesn't quite work. Turbo Blade Lassie. Katana, uh, yeah, look, come back to me on that one. Come back to me. This room proved to be an interesting one. I could tell it was a boss room. I could tell because there's always a little message before you get to the door saying, oh, call, ring the bell, call for help. But I don't do that. I don't, I don't call for help. I, I do this. I do this on my own. I mean, sometimes I've called for help in the past, sure, but I'm ignoring that now because I'm doing this on my own. But this one proved to be an interesting one. It was little, little witchy lady, little witch lady covered in mollusks of some sort. She looks like she's just been dipped in a vat full of limpets. Um, and just a witch. I've met these before in the Hypogurian jail or whatever it was called. I've met them before, but this was a bit nasty because it didn't look like a very difficult fight. And sure, I had to fight some of the big glowy eyed bastards, but that's fine as well. It was all going fine until after I killed the witch, this happened. Hmm, not good. There are two witches, it seems. Maybe more, I don't know. And it was a bit of a gradual war of attrition. I felt like I was just being very slowly grounded down, running out of potions. Nothing was immediately terrifying me, but it was seeming to be a fight that I was going to struggle to, to last. And funnily enough, I was actually saved at the point at which it was looking very grim by somebody rating one of my notes as fine. Sure, it didn't completely turn things around, but it gave me a little boost, reminding me that maybe I could do this. And sure enough, I could do it. First time, 
nice try. And I finally got access to a little room at the bottom that gave me a key so I can finally use runes, because I've collected quite a lot of runes. I've got five of them or something. I was like, why do I use these flipping things? Well, now I can. Happy days. Happy, happy, happy days. And I killed the, the, the witches. There was two witches, not one. Don't know what that was about, but they're dead. Witchy ladies was a dead end, so it's time for me to go back to somewhere I've been before, but it's getting to the point where I can't even remember uh, which places I've been to and which places are dead ends, and it's a spiralling, confusing sort of thing, but in a good way. You know, I haven't had too much of that classic stuff of being like, oh no, you haven't got the right key, so you can't get through this door. I remember in Dark Souls there was a particular bit with a, I think it was a door near the dragon on the bridge, and you just forget about it, it's not a big door. This does the good thing of only having big doors that you can't open, or like, you know, little doors that aren't important because they're just shortcuts, you know? It's better for that. Anyway, I did some backtracking, and I started poking around in the cathedral area, and I realized there's one bit I hadn't looked at, and oh, there's a bit down here I hadn't looked at, and oh, I've found a door, which I can only open if I've got a password, and gee whiz, would you believe it? I've got the right password, and uh, yeah. It's a, a, a forest, obviously. It's sort of a, a forest. I haven't, I haven't actually got lost in Bloodborne once yet. There hasn't been one bit where I don't know where to go. I'm sure that will happen eventually, but I'm quite enjoying the fact at the moment I can just wander around and find shit. Hooray! And I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I'm starting to feel fairly proficient at this game. Initially, I was dying loads, but now I feel like I'm kind of on top of things. I can do this. Oh, what was that? Was that trap? I was... Oh. Oh no, hang on. Oh, bum. Ah. Hubris. And I capped off the day with, uh, I'm not going to call it a disaster, but uh, it was a, an interesting situation. Uh, after jaunting around through this area full of dogs and a man who gave me his tonsils, I'm not joking, he gave me, well, he gave me tonsils of some sort and told me to visit the Blood Church. Remember that place? Creepy blood people? Something like that? Anyway. Gonna go and dip those tonsils in some blood, if you know what I mean. Oh god, no. That was supposed to be a sexy thing, but it's... No, 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 no. Anyway, um, I, I kind of dropped a lot of souls. How many souls? Probably about 50,000, I think. Maybe 45, I don't know. Whoa! Yeah. Um, I had to make my way very, 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 very precariously back. And I did get them back. Whew. And then I, you know, like an idiot, carried on, just j jaunting around, running through a pool of oil, fighting some men, d fighting some werewolves. Yeah, I, this is making me uncomfortable. I'm carrying around this many souls. No, no, no. No, I'm going to play it safe. Play it nice and cap off today quite nicely, going back home with my lovely prize and level up a bit of strength. Oh, I love a bit of strength. Love a bit of strength. Bam! Oh no, that's back in black and technically I'm wearing grey, uh, whatever, I felt like it, it's a good day, I'm in a good mood, I've just eaten a substantial quantity of yoghurt. Anyway, today it's back to the Forbidden Woods, uh, technically for a Forbidden Woods or Forbidden Forest, it's, called. it's not terribly forbidden. I mean, there was a door with a password, sure. Once you've gotten in, it's quite easy to get in. Anyway, this is my challenge for today, and you've already seen it. It's a cannon. It's a cannon man. And what am I going to do? Well, I've got options here. Option A is try and just blitz it, run all the way up, kill the man behind the cannon. Option B, try and do the traditional video game thing of hiding behind the walls along the way as sort of safety points. Sounds like a good idea, but these wally things are basically sheds, and I think if I went into being Q with a cannon and started firing at the sheds, I don't think those fuckers would last terribly long. Um, and if you're working for the police, I'm not going to do that. Or plan three, which is to specifically allow the cannon to shoot out the buildings in the hope that they will get destroyed, yes, but there might be stuff in the buildings that I can't get otherwise. So... Hmm, I think I might start with plan three, try and destroy a couple of them, see what happens. Also, I'm not 100% confident that this is going to be the only thing going on. I reckon that behind those sheds there might be some enemies or something. I don't know, it doesn't look very difficult, and I'm getting the impression there's going to be more to this than meets the eye. Alright, so it looks like there isn't more to this than meets the eye, and yeah, the only thing I didn't account for is the fact that they're going to do the classic thing with the cannon of shooting where you are going to be, rather than shooting 
where you are. Nog's sort of shot, I meant I got shot by the cannon. And it was a one hit kill. Very good, slow clap. Well done, Mr. Cannoneer. I hope you're happy, Mr. Cannoneer. I am going to kill you, Mr. Cannoneer. Exciting developments from Cannon Land. Yeah, you can go around the side. Seems like there was an option four. You don't have to go near any of it at all. You just run through here, round there, and then you just keep dashing across so they can't get a good sight at you like you're being sniped or something. It's pretty much the same. It's just like Sniper, but with a cannon. Anyway, kill the cannon man. Ha 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 ha. Told you I was going to kill him, didn't I? I did tell you. I mean, obviously, I was going to kill him. Anyway, then I mean, I got to have a go on the cannon, which is underwhelming. I don't usually have this problem, I promise. Ha ha ha. Ah, it's a, it's a willy joke. This creepy place has left me in quite a pickle. I approached a man who looked like a zombie, but I couldn't lock on to him. And so I didn't attack him. And sure enough, he's not meant to be attacked. He's someone you can talk to. And he, yeah, I mean, it kind of looked like he was eating this family. Not going to lie. That's all I look like. And yet he's asking me if there's any nice places he could stay, any cosy places. Or do I know of any places? And I'm kind of thinking, ah, are you a cannibal? Am I going to send you somewhere where you're going to eat people? I'm in multiple minds about this. I mean, I'm thinking, well, if he is going to go and kill some people, maybe I could send him to the chapel so he'll kill the old lady for me, save you a bit of work. But I'm thinking that the chapel's creepy and something bad's going to happen to those people anyway. Uh, I should have sent him to I don't know what to do with this guy. I mean, it could be that it's a kind of triple bluff and the fact that he looked like an enemy and so most people will attack him maybe. And maybe because I haven't attacked him, if I look after him, something good will happen. Oh, Bloodborne, you're, you're running circles around my brain here. <sighs> you know, I'm just going to leave him for now because I don't know what to do. As Indiana Jones once famously said, snakes... I don't like snakes, and I don't like snakes either, Indy Andy Jones, and it's, yeah, it's not too much of a problem. These guys are fairly easy to kill, they're just like squishy little snake buddies, although I've got an inkling that it might be leading to something of it. Ah, yes, I was not wrong about this. The little, little snakes are just an aperitif, if you will, for the big snakes, the big daddies, and they're quite frightening. This is an interesting area. It's very much, again, feels quite inspired by Resi 4, especially got the big sort of men walking around with snakes coming out of their heads, carrying axes. Very Resi. And also very Resi 4 in the fact that this area is not actually particularly frightening in itself, but it is grinding me down. It's this sort of labyrinthian forest area that just seems to spiral off. You feel lost all the time. You feel like you're losing track of where you're going or where you you've come from and it's not pleasant it's just uh, it, it's very much an area that reminds me of blight town in a way not that it's awful by any means but that you just get the sense that you really want to just get through it and then never come back to it ever ever again and just at the point when it feels like my psyche is completely fraying to the point of being useless i discover this this is like a pond with lights on it Little hovery lights. If I hadn't played this game before, this type of game, I would probably think, oh, maybe it's like a Zelda fairy pool and I'll get all my health back. But that's not how this works. That's not how this fucking works, is it? No. So what am I going to do here? I feel like I should go in it just because... Oh, I don't want to go in it, but you've got to go in it. Otherwise, how are you... Oh. Nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing. I'm just going mad. I'm just genuinely losing my mind with fear. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, God, it's a new thing. Oh, uh, right. No, I'm going to kill it. Going to kill it. Sorry. No, that didn't hit. Oh, hit him again. Hit him again. Oh, thank God for that. Okay. Well, actually, I feel a bit bad about that now. It didn't, didn't take much. And just looking at him on the floor. God, this is like an E.T. moment, isn't it? Like, at the end of the film, they realise that... Oh, maybe... Oh, have I made a mistake? No, I probably didn't make a mistake. Look, there's bloody loads of them over there. Let's kill them. Let's kill them all. Oh, God. I mean, I did kill them all, but... Look at them. They're just little wobbly blobheads. And they're, they're wobbling around towards me like they want a hug. Maybe they just want a hug. No. Oh, what have I become? 
Ah! Hello, boys and girls! I'm stuck in a tree! Yes, I'm stuck in a tree, which feels like a, a fairly good time to wrap up uh, today's little adventures in Bloodborne. Time to go home with a hunter's mark and spend some stuff. Yeah, it's kind of annoying that I'm stuck in a tree. I, I don't really like But I did leap off a cliff in an unlikely way. So, uh, yeah, probably not a game-breaking bug that's going to mess up too many people. But hey, I'm stuck in a tree! I'm stuck in a tree. Imagine that. Goodbye. Boom! <laughs>